let's get this party started. All right, we are deviating. Whoa, am I still alive? <laughs> Accident, what do you do? <laughs> We're deviating from the standard emergency evacuation program today. We're going to talk about actually when you guys, how many people here trailer out to trail ride? Yeah? How many people leave the property with their large animals? What? Yeah, come on. Okay, how many people do horse shows and not trail, trail ride? Oh good, this is going to be so much fun! <laughs> so, we're going to talk about preparation and planning and when you're out on the trails and probably what you're going to find, especially if you've bought my manual, is a lot of the information is going to cross over to emergency evacuations during natural disasters. So we're going to get started with before you trailer out. I have my little agenda so I don't forget what I'm saying. Sometimes I forget my name. So if I forget, will somebody remind me that my name is Vicki? Husband? He already forgot. <laughs> okay. Preparing for trailering out, preparing for your animals, say for a camping trip or if you're going to go on a long ride. What do some of you do? What? Huh? Food, water. Food, water. Okay. Is this packing? Packing stuff, right? And you guys, okay, let me, let me ask this question a different way. How many people plan to trailer out? Plan ahead of time? Great. So when you get ready to trail your, your animals out, yes, they're probably used to going places. Maybe they're new to going out. But there are different things that you can do before you even go out to help your animals prepare. So, and again, this all crosses over to emergency evacuations. When does it apply for emergency evacuations? When you get a weather warning. What I like to do is I immediately start my animals on two things. And if I'm trailering out, I start about three days before I go out. If there's a potential fire, I start the minute we get the weather warning. Electrolytes and probiotics. Electrolytes because I want my animals well hydrated before I leave my property. Once you get out there and you see that your animal is having a problem, you're not going to want to dump a bunch of electrolytes in them because their gut's already starting to dry. So I always do this about three days in advance and that way when we get on the road, I know we're good. We're, I get this could sound really bad, but I'm going to say it anyway. We're well lubed up <laughs> and uh, we're ready to go. And the horse is hydrated, so if he's not drinking at first, I'm not too worried. Oh, look at that. Hello. Probiotics. The trailer ride can be stressful. If something happens on the trail, it can be stressful. I start these just because it helps keep the animal's gut mellow. Something else that I do that's very important when you're planning because it can get very, you know, when you're trying to plan for a trail, even just trailering out for the day, you always think, oh my gosh, what did I forget? Did I forget my halter? Did I forget my bridle? Heaven forbid you get to where you're going and you realize you have no bridle. So I found that it's very important to have my bottle of sanity. You can put whatever you want in your sanity bottle. <laughs> Vodka, whiskey, I don't know. I'm sorry, hot chocolate, but that might melt. Um, electrolytes for yourself. I didn't say vodka or whiskey, I swear. <laughs> Whatever covers your, your sanity, this is, starts, this is my animal sanity, this is my sanity. I skipped some of these parts, but, so other things you do before you go out. How many people have horses that can pony other horses? Yeah, okay. Why is that important before you start going out on trail rides and going camping? Don't be shy. There's no wrong answer. You might need to. Why? Somebody goes off. Somebody else gets in trouble. Exactly. If somebody else gets in trouble, you have a couple outcomes. One, your horse spooks and runs off with the horse that just ran off, <laughs> or the rider is stuck on the ground, and you're going to have to take their animal back. The best thing you can do is teach your horse how to pony other horses, mares and geldings. Because when something happens like that, first of all, you can usually tie the rider back to the saddle and then pony the horse back. 
then you don't have to call CalSTAR. <laughs> but you can also get the animal out safely, which is one less thing to worry about. Teaching the horse how to handle some type of chaos when that happens is also a huge added factor. It takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of time with the animal because that's a lot to teach them. So uh, loading, you guys already know. Can anybody ride with just their halters and lead lines? Can anybody stop their horse if it takes off at a dead bolt with the halter and lead line? Don't answer that, Tom. I already know your answer. What? Yeah? Has anybody tested that theory? Good. Great benefit. If you're going to teach your horse how to do that, don't do that when somebody's fallen and their horse is running off. <laughs> Just saying. OK. That is kind of the ahead of time. Now, I'm going to hand out some flyers. I hope we hopefully have enough, if you guys would just pass those out. Trailer preparation. Everybody knows what to put in a trailer when you're planning to go out into a ride. But if you have the right equipment in your trailer, these are things you can keep in your trailer all the time, which again crosses over to emergency evacuations because you're ready and you're planned. So what I've done is created a list, and please, please know I <laughs> did this at 11.30 at night. Is that when I emailed you, Dawn? So there's a couple little errors that I didn't catch until I was, whoa, fully awake. Can you guys see me OK? I just grew like five feet. Must have been that donut. All right, little things that you may not think of. I'm not going to cover everything because you guys already know the basics. I have an animal portfolio that I keep in my trailer all the time. What this is, is it has, and this again crosses over. I have, is this upside down? Oh, 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 look at that. I have my animals identification cards that are laminated, and it has a picture of the owner. Who is that beautiful man? Oh, that's my husband. Hi, baby. <laughs> and his horse that's even, that doesn't know he's a horse, 1,600 pounds of golden retriever. It has his name, it has our horse's name. It has two emergency contact numbers. If I go camping, this hangs on the stall. If I have to do, go to an emergency and my horse has to be evacuated, it hangs on the barn or the, or the panels that he's been put into. That way, if something happens, they know who to contact. They don't have to run around and try to figure out who to contact. This stays in our trailer all the time. We have a section for each of the horses. And I always have a picture of myself with the horse. So that way, if you go and say, that's my horse, look at the picture, that connection is there. People don't have to question it. Because we already know nobody ever steals horses during emergencies, right? <laughs> nobody drives in from Arizona with a 10-horse stock trailer. I also have my emergency planning guide, which notates all the additional emergency numbers, my veterinarian, any medical issues that my horse may have, any weird behaviors that my horse may have. My horse doesn't like men in pink tutus. I don't know what it is. And it happens so it happens way more often than I've ever thought. You know, a man in a pink tutu walks up, my horse is like, whoa. And then he runs away and all kinds of things happen. But all of this is here in this binder. I also have, oh. This is my emergency card for Ventura County. We don't need that. I keep a couple copies of that so that if something does happen, my horse has to go to the vet, we become separated, he becomes injured, or we have to evacuate, I can hand these out to people. They're already pre-printed. I usually keep two or three copies. What I also keep is a couple more pictures. That's my beautiful horse. Yay. Isn't he good? Hi. Um, sorry. It's like half, I have no kids. More pictures, more personal information. There you go. Nothing like riding boxer shorts. And registrations. And any old vet documents. You don't have to update it with your current vet documents unless you really want to, but it becomes kind of tedious. I mean, the goal is, regardless of what you're trailing your house for, or horse out for, it's to make it easy for yourself and, and keep it easy, not just that one time. I keep this book in the trailer all the time. And if I trailer out, whomever I'm trailering out with knows where the book is. Something else that
that a lot of people don't think about when they're trailering out. Let's see, anybody have extra halters? That's not common. The Heidi key. How many people have Heidi keys in their trailers? Yeah? No? Something to think about. Most people carry their keys on their being or in their saddlebags. So that really, in professional terms, sucks when you lose your saddlebag or you lose your horse. Then you have no way to get into your truck. So what I do is I have a Heidi key. It's magnetic, and it's up in the corner of the trailer. Good to know. Anybody I'm riding with? Yeah. And we don't keep diamonds or, you know, $3,000 saddles in there with sterling silver. None of that, just so you know. That, that just, oh, you want the truck? You take, you take Mark's truck. <laughs> um, I offer up somebody else's truck. So the Heidi key, that also serves if something happens to me, somebody else knows where that is so they can handle my rig, my trailer, my truck, and help me during if something does happen. Uh, extra clothes, that's kind of a given. Small bag with medicine in case you get stuck for any reason. More in the manual, I go in order. A lighter for whatever reason. Your triangles or your flares. How many people have flares or triangles in their trailer? Okay, so for those that have the flares and triangles, what are they for? Oh, come on, you guys. What? Right, and how far back do you put those triangles if you break down your first triangle, huh? A lot of people recommend 100 feet. Well, you start at 100 feet back and then you work your way forward. And that gives a vehicle time to maneuver around if they notice that you're broken down. Pardon? What? Start at least 50 feet. Yeah, at minimum. Also, very important, if you, we have the little electric flares, we don't want to you know, light a fire, then I have to do a whole different emergency planning group. <laughs> Remember to change your batteries. We actually keep our batteries out in a bag, and before we trailer out, we put them in. So that way we don't have any wear or erosion. Batteries don't really erode like they did in the old days. Notepad, in okay, case something happens. Okay, two things, because I know we're running out of time, I want to mention. Huh, bottle opener <laughs> for your, Sanity. what's this? <laughs> okay, wine bottle opener for what? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. A dry erase board with a dry erase marker. I use this to notate if I'm out by myself or even if I'm out with a group of people to notate where we've trailered out to and about when we're going to be back and who my emergency contact is. And I put that dry erase board and marker in the back of my trailer just sitting up against the wall. If something happens, I want people to have access to it and to know what to do or who to contact. Also put your departure As, time in. Yeah, estimated departure time, really important to put estimated return time. Now, a lot of us will say that we're going out for 45 minutes and we come back three hours later. Yeah. Who does that? <laughs> Ooh, look, look at that trail. <laughs> Tom, we're only gonna be out for 45 minutes, four hours later, Tom's like, how long have we been out? 45 minutes. <laughs> Here's a candy bar. <laughs> so, dry erase board. They also have stickers that you can put on the inside of your trailer. It has your emergency information, medical issues, medical concerns, and two emergency contacts. That sticks right on the inside of the trailer. I always recommend having these things, and I hope you never, ever need them. These are things you hope you never need, but if you do need them, if you're riding by yourself, if you have a group that you're riding with, and you've communicated where your extra key is, where these things are, it is going to make it so much easier. If you have a nice horse, and this nice lady wants my truck and trailer. She knows where the Heidi key is, and she knows who to call to say, oh, she's still out on the trail. We didn't want you to worry while she drives away in my truck and trailer. <laughs> I'm just saying. Flashlights. Uh, what, did I already say bottle opener? <laughs> jacks. Who has metal jacks in their, in their trailers? 
Another thing that's very important, makes it real easy. What? Not the truck, the trailer. Trailer. Okay. Well, on the truck, it starts to take up room. And you have a way. You already have your truck equipment to lift it. But your trailer, you want to use that jack, that sweet jack, so just, to, the, just to roll your back tire up. Or, yes, chalk. Everybody says so many different things. I'm going to say the professional term, that metal thing where you can roll the other tire up. Yeah. Or use to lift your trailer, or use as a pillow. Works great. So, like I said, I'm skipping over a lot of things, but these are the little things that a lot of people don't think about. And when you trailer out, it's really Im important. How many people ride by themselves? OK, so you're me. You're crazy. When I trailer out, I make sure my people, my emergency contacts, OK, hide a key is set up, dry erase board is in the, in the trailer. I've gone here. I'm going to be back at this time. Does anybody have any questions about the little tidbits that we might not have thinking about. Yes? What, what is the loud boom bar? Oh, yeah. See, I was going to skip some of that. But that's so important. When you're trailering out, one of the things you want to do is have a really loud boom box. Because if other people are around you, you find out how much training they've had to see if their horse spooks when they hear the <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Wait, Don. Boom, 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 boom. Can you feel the vibration? Boom, boom. And then the horse in the trailer next to you goes <laughs> So that's the loud boom box right there. Multi-purpose, entertainment. <laughs> All right. I have a question. Yes. Oh. Yes. I wondered, I, I came in a little bit later. I'm sorry. Could you address the issue of having a um, power to turn for a car that you have a veterinary medical care for a horse? Um, um, I have that. I have that. There's a worksheet that I'm going to get to. Okay. So, no, that's a great question. That's an outstanding question because it's something we're going to address. Okay. See, I was reading your mind right there. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Hi. Oh, wait, I'm going to get to the carry okay. stuff. I, yeah, I have that actually on the list. Okay. And most importantly, a change of underwear. <laughs> okay? Because there's nothing like going to the emergency room and not having clean underwear. Yes, ma'am. I just want to let everybody know that we actually brought a packet today that has information about advanced directives for your animals. And it's the Okay, thank you, yes. And that, see, these are the things, these are the added lists. I'm just trying to keep it again, just touching on the little additional things that some people don't think of. And there's a longer list, but there's also the list Julie has. I have a detailed list in my manual. There's so much information on the internet right now and through great organizations like Halter that provide this to you. And it is, I'll tell you, it is so worth having, again, I hope you never, ever, ever need it, but you might. <laughs>